Well, hello there. Ando here from senseiando.com. Uh, yeah, so I'm heading out to a Brazilian jiu-jitsu class right now, and uh, depending on LA traffic, that's going to take me probably somewhere between 45 minutes to an hour, which is not cool. Nothing worse than showing up to class, ready to do my best, and I'm all tense and cramped up from being in the car, and then you wind up with some 22-year-old jacked-up tournament stud on your back all night trying to choke you out. So what I like to do is uh, a little bit of a warm-up here before I get to my warm-up there. Uh, so I thought I'd just turn on my phone and show you a few of the things that I like to do. Maybe you'd like to try them too. So uh, here they come. Okay, quick word of caution. My first thought was, hey, this would be really cool if I shot this while I'm driving. But my second thought was, wait a minute, there's nothing cool about flipping your car, flying through the windshield, and getting your head sliced off. So let's just remember, if you're driving a car, you are operating a guided missile. Don't do anything that would put you or anyone on the road at risk. Get your priorities straight. Safety first. Working from the top down, I'm going to start with my neck. Uh, you may have seen I have a video called uh, Neck Exercises for Martial Artists. I believe most martial artists don't put enough time into training their neck, especially the ones with skinny necks like mine. So, uh, let's warm up really simply with a couple of shrugs. You can roll them forward and backward, squeeze it out. This is a great way just to kind of relax and get the blood flowing. But now more specific to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and fighting in general, uh, I'm going to use my friend here, the headrest, to do a little bit of isometric work. So, hands on the wheel, eyes on the road. Uh, just putting the back of my head on the headrest, and I'm just going to start pulsing into it. This is great. This is not just like a wall where you have a firm surface. This is a little bit soft, so you can actually penetrate a little bit. So you can go in straight. You can angle a little bit as long as you're keeping your eyes on the road. I think this is pretty cool. Once you're done with kind of these pulses, uh, I like to kind of go for time and just really strain and just put it in there, build up that neck. Oh, that feels good. Of course, people driving by will think you're absolutely insane, but we know better, don't we? Now, since I'm working out the back of my neck, I'd also like to work out the front of my neck. So what I like to do is uh, put up an elbow on the window or up on the door frame. Uh, and that way I can use the back of my wrist against my forehead and do the same kind of idea. I'm just going to start pulsing it forward. I can roll it around a little bit over the eyebrows here. There we go. And go for time. Let's just really squeeze that out. Ugh. Whew, that's a good start. All right, let's move down into the shoulders. Um, obviously, if you have a steering wheel in your hands, there are many different ways that you can push and pull, uh, do isometrics on this wheel to challenge your body. Uh, if you saw my video on shoulder flexibility, you know I had some issues with my shoulders, and the exercise I showed in that video is the one you can apply right here to the steering wheel. So all I'm gonna do is push myself back into the seat. I'm looking to get my arms fully extended and uh, kind of squeeze my chest, round my shoulders a little bit. And then I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to pull on the wheel and lift myself away from the seat. That's important. So again, I'm going to push back and then pull forward. Push back and pull forward. You should really feel your back start opening up, your chest start opening up. This one feels great. Give that one a try. Next up is your grip. First time I saw this exercise was in a judo school a long time ago. And no matter what other exercises I've tried, nothing beats this one. So give this one a shot. Basic idea, all you're going to do is squeeze your hand as hard as you can, and then you're going to open it as wide as you can. And you're going to do this as fast as you can for as long as you can. So hard as you can, wide as you can, as fast as you can for as long as you can. Now, this may look simple or sound easy, but if you've never tried this before, I want you to go do this immediately, then come back and say you're sorry. So on the steering wheel, what I like to do, is put uh, both hands right up here on top. Again, I'm gonna do a palms down version first, and uh, I like to just hover my palms right here on the top. And again, I'm just gonna squeeze and open, squeeze and open, squeeze and open, make sure you're using your thumb, make sure you stay focused and keep coaching yourself to go faster, harder, faster, harder, wider. There's so many things you can do badly on this, so do it right. Once you crank that out, you're gonna feel this pretty fast, maybe uh, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, that's gonna be about it. Uh, shake that out. And then I like to do a palms up version. There's other variations, but these are my two favorite. So now you got your palms up. You can do this underneath the wheel, or for right now, I'll just put it on the side of the wheel. So same thing, my hands are open as wide as they can. You say go, and you're just squeezing and opening, squeezing and opening, squeezing and opening, ah, as fast as you can, for as long as you can, just keep that going. 
Shake that out. Now, if you feel a little safer with your thumbs hooked around the wheel so you have the grip on the wheel, that's pretty good too. Opening your hand as wide as you can, grip the wheel as hard as you can, and just make that your exercise. You can move your hands around the wheel to different positions, but I promise you, if you do this one enough times, you may not even make it to class. Okay, so now I'm gonna throw a curveball at you. Uh, your warm-up shouldn't just be physical. I think you should also have a bit of a mental warm-up. So specifically for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, that means uh, dealing with getting caught in a submission. So what I like to do is, since my hand's on the wheel with my pinky down anyway, uh, I kind of like to put a little pressure on my elbow as if I got caught in an arm bar. You could also frame across if you want and do it this way. But the point is, when you're a beginner and you get caught in an arm bar, there's a tendency for your whole body to freak out and tense up. So what I like to do is by just by putting a little pressure here under control, um, I can just relax a little bit, get used to it, kind of feel what's necessary to tense up and what's not. So I can relax my neck, relax my shoulder, and just kind of get used to it. This is going to better allow me to escape uh, if I get caught in class, if I get caught in class. Now, <laughs> the cool thing is, uh, if you're at a red light or you're pulled over, or you're just in the parking lot outside class, you can uh, also you know, put your arm behind your chair, maybe put yourself like in a Kimura type position or an Omoplata type position, maybe put up your arm behind your headrest again and put yourself like in an Americana. Whatever you have to do, put yourself in uncomfortable positions while you have the uh, control to do so, so that when you're out of control and someone else is grabbing you, you feel better prepared, more comfortable, finding ways to slip out of them. You can even use your seatbelt for gi choking. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that don't do that okay next one comes from Eddie Bravo I saw him doing this uh, in some video on YouTube if I can find that link I will put it up um, he wasn't doing it in a car but I think it fits our purposes perfectly basically anytime your car might be at a red light uh, or stopped pull over to the side of the road um, just pop your foot up onto your seat and now you have the perfect training equipment to practice your choking just wrap it up and give it a squeeze um, this is an amazing way just to kind of get deeper into your technique. It's incredible how many different subtleties there are to just a simple squeezing movement. But uh, this will give you the time to do it. Uh, and of course, the other nice thing about this is if someone gives you a weird look, even though I'm thinking about choking someone in my head, uh, I can just make it look like I'm, I'm resting. Okay, moving down into your core. I like to move my seat back to allow a little bit of room. And uh, first off, just sit up straight. That alone starts engaging different muscles and uh, actually starts feeling pretty good. Uh, part two would be to lean back into that space and uh, just play around with it. Let your uh, stomach engage, make little circles, little figure eights, uh, whatever makes you happy, a little crunching there. That really wakes up those muscles. Part three would be to then, as you're leaning back, uh, try lifting up your heels. Now, I'm not going to lie, if you have cruise control, that makes this a lot easier. Uh, if you don't have cruise control, you can still play around with one leg or just the heel of your gas foot. That's up to you. Again, be safe. Um, but, you know, leaning back in that space, making sure I got some tension on my stomach already. Uh, I'm going to start lifting up my heels, start moving around my legs a little bit. Uh, that's actually a pretty good burn. And then the last variation of this that I like is uh, sitting up straight, again, without any assistance from the chair, uh, with my legs at like a 90 degree angle. I'm just gonna try to lift up my heels right up off the ground. Um, and if you can get your thighs off the seat so that you're just sitting on your butt, these are, these are actually hard, kind of like hanging uh, leg raises. So those are four variations for your core. Okay, one more, this time for your legs. Uh, we were just lifting our heels to challenge our core, so now let's uh, press our feet into the floor. Did that just rhyme? Hey. Okay, so what I want you to do is you're sitting up straight already. Uh, you got your legs at a 90 degree angle, um, hands on the wheel. All you're gonna do is you're gonna dig those heels into the floor and just give it a press, give it a squeeze, just give it that little bit of resistance. That's a nice isometric workout. Now, we can take this one step farther though by trying to actually lift your body up off of your seat. Now, I'm not talking about a foot. I mean a quarter of an inch, a little bit is all you need. Sitting up straight, heels on the floor, just trying to lift up your butt, your thighs, everything off the seat. Just get it all the way up there. It's like the beginning of like a leg press machine. Now again, if you have cruise control, that makes that a lot easier. Be very careful with this. Um, but boy, if you can work a couple of sets of your legs before you get to your class, I promise you're gonna arrive with a good sweat going. Okay, that's it, I gotta get out of here. If you can use any of those movements the next time you're on your way to class or just stuck in the car, Great, but please remember, always make safety your number one priority. No workout is worth dying for or killing someone for. 
If you like these tips and you want more of them, jump over to senseiando.com and get on my email list. Go do that right now. Until next time, keep your eyes on the road, your hands on the wheel, and keep fighting for a happy life.